Here is a cool and effective way with which we can add atmospheric light in Lightroom. You can give it a try yourself by downloading this RAW file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's see how it's done. First off, we want to work on the basics. So let's open the basic panel and right away change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. The base image obviously is more on the darker side. That's because I want to be able to restore details from those highlights. But the Adobe Standard Profile will help us bringing up the brightness of the darkest parts a little bit by reducing the contrast. So that helps. Another thing we can do to brighten up the image is of course to use the exposure slider. So let's bring that up. I'm going to raise it quite a bit. And as we push it up like this, we will get way more details back in this image. But looking at the histogram, of course, we're running into issues with clipping in the brightest parts of the image. Clipping right around here in the sun isn't a big deal, but it shouldn't be there for the rest of the sky. So what I'm going to do to fix that is to bring down the highlights. And just like that, it looks much, much better. I still think the darker areas are a bit too dark. What we can do to change that is to bring up the shadows. But keep in mind, we don't want to raise the shadows too much. We just want to bring up the base level a little bit so we have a bit more detail. But I want to keep the tree in the foreground rather dark to have a nice contrast between the dark subject and the brighter background, which we will be introducing later. But for the basic adjustments, that is looking good. Another thing we can do is to bring up the blacks. Again, just be careful to not overdo it. But increasing the blacks also helps creating a soft look, which further helps making the atmospheric light effect look more natural. You will see that in a minute. What I'm going to do as well is to bring up the whites just a little bit to get a bit more contrast back from the scene. And then let's work on the wild balance. I want this shot to feel a lot warmer. So what we can do is to use the temperature slider and just bring up the temperature like this. So that's looking pretty good. Again, we don't want to overdo it. We want to have some natural colors in here, just bringing up the temperature to introduce a little more warmth. And finally, let me bring up the texture to push the sharpness and to further improve the glowing dreamy look of this shot I'm going to bring down the clarity very gently and I'm also going to bring down the dehaze. So that's looking pretty good. I'm not touching the vibrance or saturation. I think the colors for this scene look pretty good already. So let's take a look at the before and after comparison. Instantly, we can notice much more details in this image. Of course, we did lose contrast because of the tonal adjustments, but we can bring back contrast now with a little bit of masking. So let's do that. Open up the masking panel and right away, let me show you how we can create this atmospheric light effect. So what I want to do is to fill the back part of this landscape with light without affecting the subject or the foreground. To start this, we need to create a linear gradient mask. I'm going to drag it down like this. I just want to affect this part right here. I don't want to get too close to the foreground. Of course, with this linear gradient, we will affect the sky and the subject. So we need to get rid of this part for this mask. Therefore, we are going to use the subtract button right here. And then we can choose select subject, which will get rid of that tree automatically for us. Well, it's not working perfectly, but for this purpose, it should be fine enough. We can also subtract, select sky to get rid of the sky. Now, of course, we're left with some parts of the tree still selected. We can simply subtract a brush. And then I'm just going to brush over all these things we don't want to have selected. Remember, I just want to change the landscape in the distance behind this tree. All right, that's looking like a clean mask. Now let's add this light effect. To add light, the most basic thing we can do is to bring up the exposure. So let's do that. As I raise the exposure, the darker parts of the background will get brighter. In the background, we are losing contrast and that gives the illusion of some kind of haziness going on in the background. And that's exactly the light effect we want to achieve. Couple this with the dark subject in the foreground and we get a really nice contrasty scene. And this light effect will just help make the subject pop a lot more. Of course, we cannot only create this effect by increasing the exposure. What we can do as well is to bring up the blacks, for example. This will make the darkest parts of the background brighter. 
a benefit of increasing the blacks is we will not run into overexposure problems since we're just making the darkest parts brighter. One more thing we can do is to go down into the effects panel right here and bring down the dehaze gently to make the background even hazier. So that's looking pretty good. But you might have already noticed, due to these adjustments, we are losing some colors in the background, which I really don't like. I want the light in the back to feel really, really warm. So I'm going to bring up the temperature to bring back colors in here. And I'm going to raise it quite a bit to create the illusion of this golden hour light. That is looking perfect. Now let me deactivate just this one mask to see the difference from before with a rather flat looking image to after. Now we have created a lot more depth with this light effect in the background. Of course we can fine tune this image some more with some more masking. So let's do this. I wanna continue with a new select sky mask and let me subtract a linear gradient, getting rid of the bottom part right here. What I want to do for the sky at the top is to make it just a bit darker. I'm going to drop the exposure very gently. I'm going to bring up the contrast, which will make the darker parts darker, but also make the brighter clouds brighter. So that's just looking nice. Then I'm going to bring down the blacks. Again, this will just affect the darker blue parts of this selection. And I think I'm even going to add a bit of clarity just to make the clouds pop. All right, nice. I think I'm going to add one more mask on top of this one. So let me start with a color range mask with which I'm going to target the blue parts of the sky right here. Again, I'm subtracting a linear gradient with which I'm taking out most of the bottom part like this. And again, let me bring down the exposure, making the blue part of the sky darker. I'm also going to drop the blacks and let's bring up the contrast. All right, that's looking nice. Now there's one more thing I want to do and that is to make the foliage of our subject pop. It only makes sense because we have some bright sunlight behind it, so the leaves on this tree should be much brighter in my opinion. So how can we target them? I'm going to try that using a color range mask and let me click somewhere in here. This selection might be a little bit too narrow. Let me bring up the refine slider. So maybe like this, I think that's looking good. Of course, we are selecting way more than needed because I only want to target the foliage of the tree. So I'm going to subtract and let's choose select sky first because there are parts of the sky selected as well. Then I'm going to subtract a linear gradient, just getting rid of everything in the foreground and to clean up this mask a little better, I'm going to subtract a brush, brushing along the tree line in the back. So this should be a pretty good selection. Now let's make the foliage brighter. Again, I'm starting this by raising the exposure. I'm also going to bring up the shadows because these leaves are kind of on the darker side. And let's bring up the whites. I think the darker parts look good, but the brightest leaves are a little too bright at, the po at this point. So let me bring down the highlights to fix that. Okay, exposure wise, this is looking good for, for the moment. I do think the colors could be more intense because the sunlight is basically hitting these leaves directly. What I'm going to do for that is to simply pump up the temperature all the way, giving those leaves a much more yellowish look. And let me also bring up the tint a bit, kind of intensifying this orange yellow look. And of course we can bring up the saturation like this to make these super colorful. All right, that is looking nice. Let me see if I can adjust the color range mask a little more. So we are just selecting a bit more of this tree. I'm going to bring it up all the way. That's looking much, much better. Wonderful. I think that's it for the masking adjustments. Actually, let me brush away the sun in here because it's a bit too saturated, but that's about it. So let me turn off all the masks to see the difference from before. Notice how we are lacking depth because of the dark background and the dark subject. Two after. This is much better with the subject standing out in front of that bright light. All right, really happy with that. Now let's do a bit of color grading and therefore let's head into the color mixer tab. I want to start working on the hue. Basically, I want to bring down the orange hue, which will shift some of, this, some of those leaves on that tree more into a red color range. 
and thus we're just adding a bit more color to this tree making it look more like an autumn scene i quite like that i'm also going to bring down the yellow hue just a little bit introducing some more orange tones and then let's head over into the saturation tab i want to bring up the orange saturation for the leaves on the tree i'm also going to bring up the yellow saturation now bringing up yellow will also make the grass in the foreground more vibrant which might be a problem so to counter that effect i'm going to slightly bring down the green saturation and balance things a little better this way all right i'm also going to bring down the blue saturation for the sky it doesn't need to be that vibrant and we can also take a look at the luminance panel here we can further target the leaves of the tree by bringing up the orange luminance making those leaves brighter and i might want to bring down the blue luminance to make the sky darker all right awesome then let's do a bit of split toning in the color grading panel here we can just add a very specific color tone to highlights midtones and shadows in this case i'm only using the highlights and the midtones to further add warmth to the image so i'm right now i'm in the highlights i'm setting up the hue to a warm color tone and i'm going to bring up the saturation just a little bit to improve the colors i'm going to do the same for the midtones right here again set up the hue to a warm color tone and bring up the saturation a bit all right and finally let's go into the calibration tab here as always on my images i'm going to bring down the blue primary hue this will have a super nice effect on the foliage of the tree as you can see i'm not going as crazy as i usually do so let's tone down the hue a bit like this but i want to bring up the saturation as well and that's it for the color grading now the only thing left to do the sharpening in the details panel so open it up and bring down the radius all the way increase the details all the way up then we want to apply some masking while holding down the alt key so like this and let's bring up the amount of sharpening and there we have the finished image with the atmospheric light effect in the background let me know what you think about this if this video was helpful feel free to like this video maybe leave a comment and maybe even subscribe to this channel that would mean a lot to me thank you very much for watching and see you all next time